throw some binary works a little bit. So really fast, let's first start off with something that you probably learned in fifth grade or earlier. If I have a number like 152, okay? And if you're going to, say, a store and you're going to pay $152, nowadays we have a credit card, but let's assume that all we can do is pay with paper bills. How that would work is we would get 100, five tens, and two ones, correct? Pretty straightforward. You think about this every day when you count. Because I can break these numbers down to how many ones, tens, and hundreds there are. And if I have thousands and ten thousands and so on, I can just break this up. I can simplify this even more into something that looks like this. One times ten to the second, because ten times ten is ten to the second, plus five times ten to the one, which five, ten to the one is ten itself, plus two times ten to the zero. And anything to the zero power is one. This is what we do when we add. This is in a base 10 system. Pretty straightforward. And we do this every day. Well, binary is no different, except it's in a base 2 system. So, if I'm going to look at binary, it's all going to be just the matters of ones and zeros. So if I have a number like this, and I'm just doing this off the top of my head, and let me just add another one in the front here. This is a binary number. This is how computers remember everything. Because there's only two choices, a zero or a one. But just like before, you may be, if you're thinking in a, in a base 10 system, you may think this is a um, 110,101. Well, that's not true. Because this, since this is in a base 2 system, sometimes you might see a little subscript 2 right here to show you that it's in the base 2. Um, this can be turned into a decimal number by just doing what we just did earlier. But in this case, let's just put 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 4, and 2 to the 5. And I'm going to erase this one because I don't feel like doing that. So, 1 times 2 to the 1 is 1. 0 times 2 to the 1, which is just 2, is actually 0. 2 to the 4 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. So 4 times 1 is 4. 0 times 2 to the two to the third. Sorry, I have a little mistake there. That's why I think. 2 to the third, which is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. There's no 0. 0 times 8 is, you know, 0. And then 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 more is 16. So 16 times 1 goes right here. And then I just add it all up. 16 plus 4, 20, plus 1 is 21 in a base 10. So this base 2 is 21 in a base 10. That's binary. And, any, and if I want to convert from this to this, that's just dividing by 2. So just to show you that all, to show you how it all works out, let me do a little bit different one just for argument. Let me just lower this to 20. Just humor me. Um, so I take 20, divide it by 2. Um, 2 goes into 20 10 times with no remainder. So I'll put the remainder on the outside here. And I'm going to carry this down to here. And I'm going to divide by 2 again. 2 goes into 10 5 times with no remainder. So, so I do that one more time. 2 divided by, and so I bring that back down to here. 5 divided by 2 is 2 with the remainder of 1. Okay? Because 5, uh, so because it would be 4 for remainder of one. So now I bring this down to, so I bring this down to here. And two divided by two is one with the remainder of zero. 
and then I bring the one down, and one divided into two, zero times with the remainder of one. And now what I do is I stack the numbers up from here to here, one, zero, one, zero, zero, and that is binary for 21, or for 20. So 20 base 10 equals that base two. So this number here goes here, 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 here. So the last, so this is the last number we always start with, and stop with. <coughs> so this is binary, in a nutshell. And if we, this is what we need to understand first before we start going into data types in Allen Bradley. Because how we take these physical signals, and we've already seen that if I flip a switch, it becomes a one. If it's off, it becomes a zero. How the, how the computer, how the processor remembers it all is in a combination of zeros and ones. And they usually set things up in certain ways where if, for easier storage, so like if you ever go to my office, it's an utter mess. Papers are everywhere. You can't find anything. But if I actually organized it and put labels to it and stack them together and say eight sheets here, eight sheets here, eight sheets here, you'd be able to probably figure it out a lot better and find things. Well, that's how computers organize their, their information, is by a combination of zeros or ones. And there's a couple different data types that they use. Now, if I have to say a single zero or one, this will be, and I use that, that will be called a bool. Any switch or output or anything that we use is going to be stored with a bool. It's one bit, and the only, it can either be a zero or, or one. One or zero, that's a bool. One bit. One bit. Um, the next level up in Allen Bradley is what they call a simple integer. This will be eight bits or eight bools. A bool and a bit is basically the same thing. And this has a range, so this will be just a bunch of one, 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 so to speak. The next level up will be an I and T, or an integer. This is 16 bits, slash bools, and it's going to look like 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, it could be any of these, could be a 0 or a 1. So it could be all zeros or some combination, but that's what an integer will look like. I'm using 1s because it's much easier to draw than a 0. The last big data type would be a dit, a double integer. This is 32 bits for bools. And that would be this plus, so 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, And it's 4, 4, 4, 1. And so, you can see the difference that eight, bit, eight bools will make up a single integer, two single integers can make up an integer, and two integers can make up a double integer. That's how everything is stored in Allen Bradley. This is the terminology. And if I need, it, so these are what I would utilize to store uh, actual numbers. So if I want to store like a hundred thousand or you know a timer counter or something, these are what I will be using. There's a third one called real. That's going to get really complex, but this is if I need decimal points. So after doing math, this is a lot like a DIN. It's just it's structured a little bit differently. We're not going to go too far into it. But this is for storing numbers. Usually we're going to be working with these here, but some of our um, input cards might be a single integer data type. And if, when we start programming, we, we might have to define the data type to know that we're working for. So bools will only work with the data, with the commands like XICs and XIOs. So this or this, or even the energize output commands. You may get an error that says data type error is because you're putting something like this into, some, into an XIC or an XIO. 
XIC, XIO, and this is an OTE. Numbers though will be used for like timers, you know, timers and counters. We'll get to those later, and like math commands. That's what we're gonna use for all this stuff right here. So if we don't understand data types, you're gonna have problems. Because some of you, if we have a local, um, uh, if I'm off by the structure, don't kill me, I1 data dot zero, that's a pool. If I just have local I data, that's gonna be a single integer or an integer. So if you don't have that bit on the other end and you try to program in XIC, you're gonna get errors. Um, so just keep that in mind. Or if I have the A, E, and T dot one dot I dot, you know, one for instance. I might have mixed up the I and the one, I always kind of forget, just it's close enough. Um, those are bools as well. So just keep all that in mind as you start programming. The difference, and then there's another one called hexadecimal. Um, that's a 16 base count. It gets a little crazy. I might just, uh, um, so going, if I have hexadecimal, so it'll, at, you go to up to nine, and then nine, A equals 10, B equals 11, C equals 12, D equals 13, E equals 14, F equals 15, 15 and 10 equals 16 because I add one carry the go go to zero. So if I you know so if I want I'm a binary one two three four five and so on and so forth. Six, seven, and eight. And hopefully, you can see the pattern. Every time I get to the, the every time I get to the max of the base, I add one, scoot it over, and carry it through. That's what I'm just doing here. And if I want to do eleven, that's seventeen, and so on and so forth. So if I have a number like just for hypothetical, and I'm late. So if I have a one, for instance, in hexadecimal. It's going to be a 16 base. I take this, multiply by 16 to the 1, 16 to the 0. So it'll be 10 times 16 plus 1. So it's going to be 161. And if I want to convert this into binary, I just find the 10, the 10 forward binary and the 1 forward binary. So if I have 0, 0, 1, that's 9. 0, 0, 1, 0, that's and if I want to convert this into binary, that will be 10, and then whatever the one is, so zero, zero. One sixty one base ten. That was just an add-on, um, but this is the important stuff right here. So, got to know this so that when we start programming, you're using the right data types, you're using the right setups, okay? So, there's homework that I'm going to give you. I hope it's going to uh, firm this up. Okay.